Welcome to our spring follow-up video for 2018. Today it's raining, so we're going to do our most of our shooting inside the greenhouses. And we're going to start with our hothouse that houses the tropicals, which we very much expanded on, and also it it's it houses the trees that we have uh, uh, that we're acclimating that are being repotted. So let's 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 look at them. I've always been intrigued by the. Uh, Mame or small shohin size uh, Satsuki azaleas that come only from Japan. Uh, they just have the, uh, the way of doing them that's incredible. Uh, I have three trees here that I wanted to just uh, show one or two of them uh, to you. They're uh, freshly here from Japan. Uh, they were pre-quarantined there so they were able to get them right to me and uh, I'm very excited about that. So I hope this is a, a new avenue for us to have many more azaleas. Uh, this one, for instance, it has an unbelievably huge trunk for being just a few inches tall. And the, and the, and the wonderful thing is, is all the branch choices that you have. And uh, just a wonderful uh, way to approach azaleas. I carried with me a list of trees that I really wanted to fill in on. First is the Olea Europa, which is a European olive. Uh, there, there's, just, there's a passion, a desire to, to have this in your bonsai collection. First, I want to uh, speak about this uh, uh, Olea that Mr. Ishii from California, who grows the beautiful Shimpaku traditionally, he also does the olives. And this is one that the, uh, uh, the, the, the founder of the nursery started many many years ago this is a very old tree that, that's very and it has beautiful tree form it has movement they don't grow that way it has to be built and i was so excited to uh, get a lot of smaller ones that you can you know look at this tree and uh, see in a few years where it will begin to look like this and then lots of years it could become this tree this is a pomegranate. Uh, it's the twisted trunk variety, which is the most desirable for bonsai. They flower when they get to a certain age. This tree is getting really close to being a good flowering tree. You don't see fruits with it. You rarely ever would see a fruit. But uh, this is a, a prime example of what you can really shoot for in creating a specimen uh, pomegranate. It's just an awesome. You can actually uh, see the the muscly movement as it, as, it, as it coils going up the trunk of the tree. So very pleased with this and uh, in California I was able to uh, locate several smaller ones that you can enjoy building a tree similar to that. The ficus varieties that we're offering this season are quite awesome. This is one of the tiny leaf uh, varieties of ficus. It's it's a it's a beautiful shohin size. This tree is actually several years old. It, it it's it's a it's much more of a uh, it's a dwarf grower compared to the typical ficus. But it's just a beautiful tree. It has a nice aerial root. Uh, Sandy has just pruned these, so they're about to explode with growth for the spring, and it'll be gorgeous growth. This is kind of like what's left of the winter growth. The new growth is going to be like awesomely beautiful green. And uh, uh, so we have this size and also we have the medium size and you can go up to the ones that are up to 48 inches tall. And uh, now I'm going to show you an ARS tool that's super for, for uh, managing these trees. Uh, it's a trim shear that has a surgeon tool sharpness. In managing ficus trees and other tropicals, it's very important to have a very, very sharp tool. And uh, for the probably the last 30 years, I've used the Japanese high quality 
uh, ARS series of, of trim shears. Uh, you can't beat them. They're, they're actually very cost efficient, but they're, they're, they're like a surgeon's tool. They're so sharp. And a lot of the trees like ficus, they, they, almost, uh, they almost have like a rubber, uh, they, they, they have such a rubbery texture that if you don't have the tr sharp blade, it won't give you a good clean cut. So I'm going to demonstrate that here in just a second. The other tool that I like that a lot of people don't have this tool in their in their uh, tool roll. It's a, uh, it's a spherical knob cutter, but it's a miniature version. And you can use this to, to clean up a small wound, but I like it like if I'm uh, even a trident maple or, or a large uh, removal off of a ficus. It is the perfect thing to just nibble away and you end up with a beautiful, uh, less, less to heal over wound. When I sell a ficus tree, many times it's for somebody to give as a gift. And uh, they want to take a away a little knowledge before they, they get for the recipient. And the one rule I let them go with is uh, anything that grows up or down actually can be trimmed back or removed without affecting the drama of any of the branches. And so what I'm going to do here to dis demonstrate just for one second is how you can, uh, uh, you can do this very, very quickly. It's, a, it's, a, uh, it's an easy to use, very fast to use tool. Uh, this tree here has this piece here that, that sort of interrupts seeing into the tree. And notice how this knob cutter just makes a beautiful, now this has actually had a, another limb to begin with. So I'm going to start its heel over process by going in right there and, then, and stop right there. So this tree would be a blast to work with. It has like, um, you know, it's, it's going to change so much in an hour's time in pruning because each pad needs to be, uh, be compacted in. And that's the way you do it. You cut the foliage back and then it just explodes with growth behind it. And so uh, it's just, uh, this tree's awesome actually. <laughs> uh, 20 plus years ago, uh, I was able to uh, order directly from China some trident maples. It only happened one time. There's just lots of, lots of complications in, uh, in getting tridents from, uh, from China and also Japan. Uh, but this group was a very pleasant group. Uh, and uh, I had a client who actually bought over 30 of these. And uh, uh, I've kept in contact with him over the years. And Trident is basically the only tree he deals with. And anyway, uh, I actually just recently reacquired those 30 trees. And I'm so excited about them. It's like I remember selling, I remember that each tree, what they looked like then. And they're just much more dramatic and larger now. So it was like Christmas morning getting these trees back. The most highly desired juniper species is the shimpaku, and therefore I always try to uh, to have as many variations of those. And uh, I have three trees that I want to talk about that just arrived here. I bought them in my California uh, on my California journey, and uh, they had to be shipped. So they're quite amazing. They were actually field grown, uh, and uh, for for several years. Uh, and putting in, the, in their training pots, I, I noticed there were roots that were two inches in diameter. So we're, we're talking about trees that have probably been there for like at least 30 years. Uh, and what the artist did is just put lots of kinks. So he really didn't have a design in mind, but he did the crucial, crucial thing. He, he left all the, the stumps of, of the branches that, that uh, were sort of superficial, but he left all this for, for the dead wood. And we'll be talking about the tool that we use for this, the carving tools, in just, just a, a few minutes. Uh, but they're just quite awesome. They're, for Shimpaku, who, whoever tries to grow these knows that they're very, very slow in, in development. And all three of theirs, these are just really prizes. I thought it would be a good idea to revisit the glass house since the uh, 
first video for 2018 because everything was still dormant and uh, thought it would be enjoyable to see everybody waking up. And this is just a great example of a, it's just the fresh green foliage. It just makes you uh, say spring is here. And uh, this is a sharp pygmy Japanese maple. Uh, I, I talk about these every time that we do a video. You just can't beat them. They're, um, uh, it's a fairly new variety, but it's consistent and the best for bonsai culture. I'm convinced that there's a romance between redwoods and folks who do bonsai. Uh, it's one of our most desired, most uh, sought after species. And therefore, uh, I try to carry many sizes in, in single tree form and forest. This year we're actually offering a, uh, a miniature size of five tree forest. It can be expanded to seven tree and uh, they're very shippable. Here's another approach to redwood. Uh, this will be obviously a single tree planting. Uh, it, it sort of follows what we were talking about with the forest being so dramatic. This tree is dramatic because it's a, yes, it's a large bonsai, but if you're in the, in the redwood forest, the, the trees that you're walking by can be 300 feet tall and their trunks be 15 feet in diameter. So it's just, it's an interesting, it's an interesting concept. And uh, this one here is almost ready to be put into a bonsai pot, but not quite. We need to finish out, it has lots of uh, places that need to be refined so the branches can taper out and then it'll be ready to become a very fine bonsai. Now let's head out to the pottery section. I'd like to show you the pots that we just received for uh, potting the five tree forest. This is the perfect tray to create that five to seven tree redwood forest. Uh, for the last several weeks, and we're actually still doing them, we're actually holding redwood uh, forest classes. And I think it's, it, it has to be one of our favorite uh, classes that we offer. Uh, we have in our uh, shade house several different sizes of redwoods uh, that are perfect for forest. It's just, it, you can even make a three tree redwood forest work and that's usually quite difficult with any species of tree you use. But uh, we have all the different sizes and uh, you can also develop this tree into a single tree. Here are some more jewels from our California uh, buying trip. These are Catlin elms. Uh, Catlins are very special for a bonsai enthusiast. They have such beautiful small foliage. Uh, they are not the typical Chinese elms that are, that are typically styled in a spiral form. These are actually more, more natural form. And uh, they, if, when they're old enough like these are, they have beautiful display of, of, of uh, nabari and surface roots. And uh, each of these can become, and within a few years, a very much a specimen and a favorite tree of your collection. I still say you cannot beat the species trident maple. If you want to grow a large bonsai, it's the one to use. You can plant them in the ground for the first five to 10 years, and you will be amazed at what you'll have at the end of that period. It's also a great tree to, to create beautiful nabari very quickly. Uh, you can actually uh, uh, put, plant two trees or three trees very close together, and they will actually fuse in a very short time. And if you want the roots to really be flared, then you put little uh, sheets of plastic or metal that make the, the that, that create that nabari in a very, very short period of time. Uh, these are just excellent examples. And uh, another tree that will become a favorite of your collection. This is definitely the time to be working on our bonsai trees. And therefore, I have stocked up on all the tools, the basic tools. Uh, I have a shipment of tools coming in from Japan, at, which, 
which will feature the uh, Masakuni brand. Masakuni makes the best tools in the world, especially when you're talking about carving. And uh, my sea of junipers is full of opportunities to carve. This is a shimpaku that I just purchased in California. And uh, it, the, the carving has been started, but it's long from being finished. Masakuni makes the hawkbill scraping tool. It actually has four edges. It makes an unbelievable tool for getting into the crotches of the branches to get all of the, the old bark off and to also follow the lines of the piece that you're, you're working on to create the striations that would only otherwise be created with lots of age. And uh, and there's various other, other types that we'll be offering. Here's the, the, the popular round version for, for when you begin to scrape the, the bark off of a live branch. It's the only thing to use. It's awesome. And then we'll be getting in the basic tools for doing the other operations also for bonsai. I'm going to end our, our uh, video today talking about the thousand hole nozzle. Uh, it's, it's very, very user friendly. A bonsai trees that are high mounted or, or have soil that could easily be washed out. This is the best tool that we've ever come up with. It's made by DRAM, so it lasts for a very long time. Uh, I like the short, not, the short wand, and this is a new shutoff valve. They've redesigned it, so it's much improved. It's just a great tool, so uh, it's, it's a pleasant tool to have. So it's been a it's <laughs>